In the second video on halides, uh, we're looking at their ability to act as reducing agents, in particular with the sulfuric acid. Now, the first thing is do not confuse this with halogens acting as oxidizing agents. So this is the halides, this is the negatively charged ions. Okay, now and it, a reducing agent is an electron donor. Uh, so what happens is that the halide ions release electrons and they um, become oxidized themselves. So fluoride will turn into fluorine, chloride into chlorine, bromide into bromine, iodide into br to iodine. Okay, now the trend down the group is this that as you progress down group seven, the there is an increase in the reducing power of the halide ions. That is to say that iodide is the best reducing agent, fluoride is the worst. Okay? And the reason for this is here. The outer shell electrons are further from the nucleus. The outer shell electrons are more shielded, so therefore they're less attracted to the nucleus, and so they are more easily lost. So in a diagram, you've got fluoride, fluoride ions. So I'm just showing just the one outer shell electron here, for clarity's sake. So this electron is very easy, uh, sorry, it's very difficult to lose because it's highly attracted to the nucleus of the fluoride. It's Similarly, the chloride, uh, there's only two inner shells of electrons. The radius is very small, uh, and so this electron is more attracted to the, uh, to the nucleus than, than the outer shell electron in bromide. Again, more shells, more shielding, the radius has increased, a weaker attraction to the nucleus, and then finally, iodide with all of these inner shells of electrons uh, the radius is very very strong uh, sorry very far away so therefore there is a very weak attraction between this electron and the nucleus okay so let's have a look at some of these reactions um, uh, so the reactions of sodium fluoride and sodium chloride with concentrated sulfuric acid now, the important thing here is that although we said that fluoride and chloride can act as reducing agents uh, and are reducing agents, in this chemistry with sulfuric acid, they do not act as reducing agents. Um, they actually partake in an acid base type reaction. So that means that the sodium fluoride reacts with sulfuric acid. The fluoride uh, acts as a base, it accepts a proton from the sulfuric acid, and you're left with hydrogen fluoride gas, and you form the solid sodium hydrogen sulfate. Similarly, sodium chloride, it reacts with sulfuric acid, uh, the chloride acts as a base, uh, it accepts a hydrogen ion to form hydrogen chloride gas, and uh, sodium hydrogen sulfate. Okay, so this is actually one way of making hydrogen and hydrogen chloride gas, and you would observe some kind of some white fumes if you made these gases. Okay, now to uh, sodium bromide. Sodium bromide with uh, concentrated sulfuric acid. Now, sodium bromide, like the chloride and the fluoride, will partake in an acid-base type reaction forming hydrogen bromide gas and the sodium hydrogen sulfate. However, it is a much stronger uh, reducing agent <coughs> than the chloride or the, or the fluoride. So therefore, the bromide ions reduce the sulfuric acid to sulfur dioxide. Okay. Now you need to learn this uh, equation here. And the best thing I find is if you can remember that it's bromide plus sulfuric acid to make sulfur dioxide and bromine then you can balance up the rest using the principles from redox half equations. 
um, we're going from sulfur in a plus 6 oxidation state to sulfur in a plus 4 oxidation state. This means that uh, sulfur is accepting two electrons. Those two electrons come from the two bromide ions. Hence why we've only got uh, two bromide here. The observation you would make is a red liquid uh, for, the, for the bromine. Sodium iodide, unfortunately, is a much more complicated picture. Okay, uh, and what we can see here is that we've actually got one, two, three, four reactions that we have to contend with to consider. So, like the previous uh, halides, it can partake in the acid base reaction to form uh, hydrogen, hydrogen iodide iodide gas and sodium hydrogen sulfate um, <clears throat> and like bromide iodide ions can reduce sulfuric acid to sulfur dioxide so going from plus 6 oxidation state to plus 4 oxidation state so here we're losing uh, sorry so here uh, the sulfur is being reduced it's um, gaining two electrons those two electrons come from two iodide ions. Um, okay, and <clears throat> we form a black solid here. Okay, but iodide is such a good reducing agent, it can actually reduce even further. It can reduce that into elemental sulfur. Uh, so that is sulfur with the oxidation number zero. Now, for this reaction, we tend to write sulfur with the uh, formula S because it just gets very messy if you start thinking about sulfur being S8. The numbers become very difficult to balance. So, the important thing here is that sulfur is going from oxidation state plus 6 down to 0. So, that means it's gaining 6 electrons. It has to gain those 6 electrons from 6 iodides. Those iodides will be converted into iodines, so we're left with three iodines. Uh, and we need an external, an extra source of protons to balance up our waters. Okay, and we've got four water molecules formed here uh, to take account of the four uh, oxygens here in the sulfuric acid. We would form yellow and black solids in this case. Finally, the reaction of iodide ions to reduce sulfuric acid to hydrogen sulfide. Now, hydrogen sulfide uh, is a notable chemical because it's got that rotten egg smell about it. Now, the oxidation number change of sulfur is quite dramatic here. It's gone from plus 6 to minus 2. So we've actually changed 8 uh, levels of oxidation state. So, in our equation, we've got sulfuric acid, uh, we're forming hydrogen sulfide. So, sulfur is gaining 80 electrons. Those 80 electrons are being donated by 8 iodide ions. Those 8 iodide ions will ultimately end up as 4 iodines. And then we are left with um, four water molecules again on the right hand side to mop up for the uh, oxygens from the, from the sulfate or the sulfuric acid. And that requires eight protons to balance up here. Okay. So just a couple of notes. Um, the halide ions uh, are always transformed or oxidized up to the halogen if the redox reaction occurs and the source of the electrons to reduce the sulfur is the, is the halide so iodide or the bromide and the number of iodides or bromides required is equal to the change in sulfur's oxidation state okay
and that's all I want to say. Thank you for watching.